What's up everybody and welcome to Mount Mograph. My name is Matt and today we are going to be doing Summit 2 um, and I'm going to make a futuristic bullet. Uh, and you know, it looks alright. It's, it's not uh, too crazy. It's not very hard. Got some cool little effects going on in there. Um, and we'll be using some of so this is not an After Effects project. Um, but this is all really basic stuff. Um, but I think it looks kind of cool and you hopefully will be able to use it for your own projects. So I'm going to be using Cinema uh, Cinema 40 um, release R15 um, and you guys can, I mean, I mean I'm pretty sure this would work all the way down to like R12. It's not a very, um, you know, th this isn't very hard to make. So this should be good for no matter what the program is. I'm going to assume you guys know basically like the navigation, um, how to move around inside of Cinema 40 as well as like the basic stuff. Um, if not, if you have any questions, just drop me a comment or a message. I will be sure to answer. So right off the bat, let's go ahead and create a primitive cylinder um, on your scene. Use your rotate tool, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees so it's on its side. Uh, bring up your quick select, men quick select menu by pressing V on your keyboard. Go to select. Um, go to live selection. Select your uh, cylinder in your object manager. Press C on your keyboard to make it editable. Um, press V again to bring up your quick select. Go to tools, polygons, select um, all the polygons on the end. Hold command on your keyboard and uh, what this is going to do is like the shortcut to bring up your extrude um, uh, property. So as you can see if I'm holding command you get like this little double square thing which means uh, you can extrude so let's do that I'm gonna hold shift as well and as you can see we've extruded our polygons creating new segments and we're gonna do that one more time press T on your keyboard to bring up your scale and while holding shift you're gonna drag to your left and this is gonna scale it down to um, zero actually I'm gonna zero sorry and I'm actually gonna back it up a little bit so it's not so long Press T on your keyboard while holding shift, drag to your left, and we're going to, this is going to, if you're holding shift, it'll scale up and down um, in increments of 10. So just uh, scale this down to zero, and as you can see, it's going to create a nice little point. Great. Um, press V on your keyboard, go to select, go to ring select, and uh, select your rings of polygons right here. Press T on your keyboard, keyboard to bring up your scale properties while holding command. Um, drag to your left, and as you can see, we scale that down. Don't go too crazy. We're just going to create an, a little ring there. Um, now go to your other side, press V on your keyboard, go to tools and modes, or sorry, go to select, go to live select. Um, grab your polygons at the end, press E on your keyboard to bring up your move tool, hold command and drag back a little bit and drag back a little bit. As you can see we've created another ring of polygons like we did before. Press V on your keyboard, go to select, go to ring selection, select your polygons. Uh, let's see if I can get them. Uh, press T on your keyboard to bring up your scale to tools while holding command. Drag to your left a little bit and this will create another um, a little I don't know what you'd call this, indent in our bullet. All right, so um, on your keyboard, press V to bring up your quick select, go to tools and modes and click model. You can also use any of the buttons over here, just, I don't know, it's it's easy to bring it up um, just with the shortcut V, which is very helpful if you did not know that. All right, so as you can see, we have now created our bullet. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is uh, gonna be a quick summit, I believe. Um, so press command R on your keyboard to do a preview and as you can see it should look somewhat similar to this. You can also go up here and click this to do a preview. Um, but like I said I just use shortcuts. Okay so now we have created our um, bullet. Let's go ahead and start to create like the lines behind it which is really really easy. It's going to be using um, the MoGraph module and the tracer. But let's first make our object. Oh, actually, and make sure to name your stuff. Uh, once we get into more advanced projects, um, that's going to be really helpful. So I'm going to call this bullet. Makes sense because, uh, I mean, it's a bullet, as you can see. All right. So um, go up into your primitives and select your platonic object. Okay. Um, drag it back a little bit. This seems pretty good. And... Um, click your platonic object in your content browser and let's just name this um let's see tracer reference or tracer ref or tracer reference whatever I, I don't know you can go crazy name this whatever you want all right I'm gonna scale this down on the radius um to 66 looks pretty good to me I don't know we won't even see this um we're gonna be adding a tracer object which is gonna select all these little corners and just um add a spiral to them 
Um, okay, so press Alt on your keyboard and double click uh, these little like stoplight looking things right here and uh, they're going to turn green double click them and it's going to turn red so that's going to hide it in your um, preview mode so if I preview it you won't see your object and also in your render view um, or when you render out this project you won't be able to see the platonic either um, okay so I'm going to put the platonic object as a child of the bullet and now let's begin our animation so create a camera um, click this button to like make the camera your view because if I was like to move it as you can see um, the camera will take the position like whatever view I have if I was to create another camera um, it's actually gonna take take whatever view I'm on so as I turn out you can see that um, camera kinda took the view but I don't need that so I'm gonna do command Z on my keyboard to undo click this little icon right here to go into my camera view go into coordinates and let's zero out all of our rotation just so we have like a straight on view of the of the bullet um, so just zero those out um, zero whoa what the heck I can't press buttons alright so um also my X properties I'm gonna zero that out and my Y properties so as you can see our bullet should be in the center of the screen if everything is zero except for our um, Z properties I'm gonna actually back up just a little bit and I'm gonna put this in the lower thirds of the screen just to be nice and artistic um, so just move your Y property to change that um, let's add a protection tag to this so right click click your um, camera object cinema 40 tags go to production and this is gonna lock it so no matter how hard I try I cannot move my object um, which is great because I want this camera to stay locked down for um, this animation so select your bullet tool and um, set your timeline up for five seconds um, yeah so let's drag our bullet off the screen um, this this is just under my view settings whoopsie um, this is just under my view settings and this is like the what what's not gonna render out like I have my area set up as 1920 by 1080 so this is gonna be off the screen and I just go into mode um, view settings view and under your tinted border I just turn my opacity way up just to, like as a reminder like that's not gonna be seen in my final render so you know I, I have an idea of what's going on but it, it's kinda helpful you guys might wanna do that you might not it doesn't matter to me alright so go into your bullet as you can see we have it off the screen click this button here to create a um, keyframe and as you can see we get our blue uh, blue dot on the timeline uh, move your timeline indicator um, to the other side so this is going to be at five seconds and all you're going to have to do is drag your bullet across the screen you know drag it a little bit farther than you need to and just click your keyframe button again and as you can see we get our little indicator of the motion go back to the beginning and play it so as you can see we have this awesome bullet just fly across the screen look at that that's incredible um, alright so let's make this a little bit more exciting now remember we do have our tracer object inside of our bullet we just have it hidden so if you're holding alt and you click your stoplight indicators I'm not really sure what to call these actually um, it is still there but we just don't need to see that right now because it's really not important so on your bullet um, go back to your to frame zero um, and we're going to spin this and that's gonna be how we're gonna make that cool little um, tracer effect in just a second and, and I'm sure if you guys have used Cinema 4D before, you know exactly where I'm going with this. So um, let's just crank this. Actually, let's keep this at zero. And we are going to actually go to the end, and we're going to put this at like 720 degrees. So um, and also set a keyframe for that. So as it comes across the screen, it is spinning, and that means that our tracer reference object is also going to be spinning. Um, okay so now let's go into our MoGraph go down to tracer um, click your tracer and your object uh, manager go to object under the trace link settings select your trace reference object and now when we play our animation we are going to have these um, lines these tracers um, that come across with our object so that is going to be exactly how we are going to create this animation and make a futuristic bullet at this point of the summit, I'm sure you guys know exactly how this is going to work. If you don't, feel free to um, to continue watching. If not, um, I hope this was helpful so far. Um, okay, so now in on our uh, tracer object, 
go down into your type and select this uh, to be cubic go to your limit and select from end and just turn what this is gonna do is like the is gonna kind of limit the distance the tracers come out from your um your uh, points on your your reference object so I'm gonna turn this up to like it doesn't really matter 27 seems good so as you can see um as it comes across the screen it kind of cuts off which is great um, okay so now let's make uh, it so because right now even though we have our tracer object here uh, we're not going to be able to see these lines if we render uh, preview as you can see they're just like markers um, so go to um, let's select a sweep object um, drop our tracer into that and now create a spline uh, rectangle go into uh, your spline menu select a rectangle drop this into your sweep nerves and let's make both of these um, properties too, the width and the height too. So as you can see, we now have um, these awesome lines coming out of our bullet. Um, and we'll make these look a little bit more interesting in just a second. Um, but as you can see, when we play our animation, it grows with our bullet. Um, okay, so under your rectangle properties, um, just turn up like your width. A little bit just so I, I I don't know actually let's uh let's turn up our height and uh, there we go that's the right property um, and just kind of uh, yeah just make it look good <laughs> um, all right so go into your sweep nerves property and turn off banking and eh, let's keep banking on actually um, go down into your details and uh, on this graph right here just click this little little node and, and drag it down and as you can see this is like your scale so as this is continuing um, they're gonna start really small and they're going to end larger so that's a helpful little hint um, I'm sure you guys know that but what uh, <laughs> I hope it's helpful nonetheless um, and just you know do whatever you want with these rotation ones just just move them a little bit make it a little bit more interesting and now go back into your camera view and when we play our animation as you can see we have this really interesting effect happen um, so I mean I, I guess I could even stop the uh, summit right here um, yeah you know like this is basically it it's really not very hard to make um, yeah and then so you just add your materials to it your background and your lights and render it out and you guys are good um, you know if you have any questions if you'd like to see um, how I made like the lights inside of After Effects or any of the textures inside Cinema 4D, drop me a comment, uh, shoot me a message, I'm happy to help. Um, yeah, so this is uh, into kind of an introduction to the MoGraph Tracer and Sweep Nerves. Um, hope this was helpful, keep your learn on, and this was Matt for Mount MoGraph.